So uh, Escobar has apologized for having uh, written in Spanish the word you are a faggot under his eyes. However, you know, despite his apology, this did in fact happen and he wore this, uh, he wore this for the whole game. So what does that say about the situation of uh, gay athletes in pro sports? Well, I think the, for me this is a, an aberration. I think what we've seen in the last five years has been maybe not as quick as we would like, but steady progress towards inclusion and more and more athletes speaking out towards inclusion. So uh, Escobar's actions are, are you know, inexcusable. They're offensive. They're intimidating. Uh, they're hurtful. And, you know, we, we don't think that, you know, they're, they're appropriate. But the response to it, is so much different than it would have been 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, that that's where we're seeing the progress. The league took this seriously. Major League Baseball, from immediately after it occurred, took this seriously and took strong steps to rectify the situation. His team, the Toronto Blue Jays, took strong steps to rectify the situation and condemned his actions immediately. Uh, Escobar himself, upon you know putting it all together and realizing uh, the effect of what he had done, has apologized and wants to do more and wants to learn about this. And the fans, the media, the general population, um, via via social media, via you know Facebook, Twitter, sports radio, whatever it might be, universally condemned this. So we've seen a real tipping point in the sports world in the last few years in the culture as a whole. So. Yes, this this incident is incredibly disappointing, and it's something that we need to work so much harder to ensure that they never happen again. But out of that, we've gotten to see a very positive reaction that we wouldn't have seen five or ten years ago. So I guess uh, uh, to lead into my next question, so as in hockey, there are no out gay professional players in baseball. How is this uh, statistically possible? Have you talked to any out gay professional baseball players? Well, even if I had, I wouldn't comment on it publicly, first of all. We have a no-comment rule about the, even the concept of it. If any gay athlete wants to speak to me or speak to anyone on our team, uh, he or she has complete anonymity. I won't even hint at it. So I apologize if that seems like I'm ducking the question, but we have a strong no-comment policy on that. Statistically, yes, we know there are closeted gay players in every sports league. When you talk about the thousands or so, I don't know the exact number, probably thousands of professional athletes in North America. Uh, there has to be. There, there has to be gay athletes in there. Why haven't they come out? Uh, I think the culture in sports and around sports has been too homophobic in the past. But I think we've really, as I said before, I really think we've reached the tipping point. And I think we're getting much, much closer to our first openly gay athlete. I think we're seeing many more allies standing up and being vocal and speaking out in support on this issue. And I think we're seeing, uh, you know, more gay athletes come out in high school and college and after they retire to really set an example for the athletes that we have still in pro sports. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's our, my, my next question was going to be, are we uh, getting close uh, to getting an out gay baseball player? And uh, I suppose, uh, you know, you're, you lean towards yes, eventually. Yeah, I said uh, in the hockey world, at least, which is my real area of expertise, I said I think we'll have an openly gay hockey player within the next two years in the National Hockey League. Um, the other sports, I think, are are rapidly getting gay-friendly. I mean, you see numerous MLB teams, did it gets better videos. Um, so they've made efforts on that part to, to speak up and be LGBT-friendly and supportive. Numerous MLB teams have gay pride nights at their park, whether, you know, whatever it's called, out night or pride night, whatever, uh, they're reaching out to this community. So I think that every sport is getting a lot closer to having openly gay athletes. And I think that within the next decade or so, which may seem like a long time, but I think within the next decade or so, uh, this will be common. It won't even be a story when a player comes out anymore. Okay. So your organization is getting uh, some of the proceeds from the three days that Escobar is being suspended. Uh, uh, can you say what this money will go towards? Uh, we don't have a firm plan for it yet because we weren't expecting it. We, we found out about it in the press conference just like everybody else. Um, so we don't have a specific plan for it. But uh, I can assure the Raiders it's going right back into the LGBT sports community. Uh, it will be something, uh, and hopefully uh, we can do something with the Hispanic community uh, and bring those groups together. So three groups that haven't always been seen as united, the Hispanic community or the Latino community, 
Um, I don't know which term is more appropriate there. I apologize. Um, the, the Latino community, the LGBT community, and the sports community, uh, I would love to take that money and find a way to bring all three of them together somehow. So um, are you uh, meeting uh, with Escobar about this? He certainly said that he would like to. Uh, he said that he would like to, and I will certainly do everything in my power to get up to Toronto or, or meet them someplace on a road trip. And if not, I will find somebody who can. So uh, I will move heaven and earth to get there to uh, to sit down with them if, uh, if that's what he thinks will help. And, uh, you know, as I said, this all kind of came about in the last two hours here. So it's not like I have a plane to take it both yet. But I will do whatever whatever I can to be there and meet with them. Right. And uh, what uh, it, it, should that meeting happen? What uh, do you think you're going to say to Escobar? Um, I would. My ideal meeting would be bringing along uh, at least one or two gay athletes and let them tell their story. Um, because while you know, I, I like to think that I explain this well, and I like to think that I am respectful of the LGBT community. At the same time, I'm also certainly aware that my experience is as a straight person and not as an LGBT person. So uh, I'd like to be there and tell Escobar about my experiences with gay athletes uh, that I've met, uh, especially my brother, my experience being a straight ally. And ideally, I'd like to have at least one athlete there who can tell them what it's like to be in a locker room when you're a closeted gay athlete and hear words like that and the impact that it has. But how do you communicate to him what he did is problematic? Because uh, one thing from the press interview that you definitely do get is that, you know, does he really have a sense of what he did was wrong? How, how do you communicate that to him? Well, we do it all the time with uh, with straight athletes. Um, we call it casual homophobia. And it's, you know, I... I Unfortunately, I think many of your readers will be familiar with it. It's someone saying, oh, that's so gay, or oh, don't be a fag. Mm -hmm. And you ask them and you say, what, what's your problem with gay people? And they say, I don't have a problem with gay people. And you're like, you just used a gay slur to describe somebody. And, oh, I didn't mean it in that way. So I think what you saw in Escobar's press conference was uh, the, the translated version of, I didn't mean it in that way. And it's, it's not hard for us when we've spoken to athletes to sit them down and say, look, you might not mean in that way, but put yourself in the shoes of a gay athlete. You're sitting in your locker room. You're trying to figure out, can I come out to my team? Will my teammates be supportive? Will they have my back if I come out? And you hear that word, or you see someone write that word on their eye black and walk around like it's the funniest thing in the world. Right. How do you think that's going to affect them? Right. And what, what we find with a lot of athletes, and I don't know if you can – swear in this, but what we find with a lot of athletes is it's a real holy shit moment where they're sitting there looking at you and we've got an audience full of, of college hockey teams and the gay athlete is explaining how much it hurts them to sit there and listen to it and you can see on the faces of the kids in the audience them thinking, holy shit, I never realized just how much I was hurting people. Right. So ideally, I'd like to sit with you now and have a holy shit moment with them. Um, are you satisfied with this, the three-game suspension? Is this enough? Um, my focus, as always, is on the education side of things, not so much the discipline side of things. Uh, the leagues are going to have to decide uh, as part of, you know, they have their suspension system in place. So whether in baseball, whether it's uh, steroids or throwing at somebody or a fight or whatever it is, they have a system that they put in place where they say this type of incident is worth X amount of games. I'm not privy to that system. I don't know what their rating thing is. My priority is, are you going to prioritize education? Okay. Are we going to, is, is our group, whether it's us or GLAD or GLSEN or whoever the hell it is, I don't really care. Is someone going to be able to sit with this athlete and explain to them and teach them why this was a problem? If you do that, that's 90% of the battle for me. Any games or, or fines or anything like that on top of it, yes, that's nice because it drives the point home. It shows that the league and the team considers this to be unacceptable. But for me, the priority 100 times out of 100 is going to be on the education side. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. All right, bye. Bye. bye.